Rachel is going crazy. She knows that her husband loves her more. She knows that Jacob should not even be married to Leah and that the only reason it happened was because her father tricked him. And yet, God is giving Leah sons, but He's not giving Rachel any sons. So, in those days, and we talked about this in chapter 16 when we talked about the situation between Sarah and Hagar. In those days, if a woman had a servant girl, a maid, really a slave girl, the husband could have a relationship with the slave girl and the first child of the slave girl belonged to the wife. Now, according to our ethical standards, that's awful. Those were the standards in those days. I'm not saying God approved, but He allowed it. So Rachel says, if I can't give you a child biologically, I will have a child legally through my slave girl, the servant girl, Bilhah. So, as we talked about with Abraham, most men, even men who are supposed to be godly, not that Jacob is very godly because he's not, are very open to a plan which involves more sex or a relationship with another woman. So Jacob gives into this plan and sure enough, the slave girl has a child. Rachel names the child and um, the child is named Dan. It happens again. The child's name is Naphtali. So here's what you have. By the time you get to Genesis 30, chapter 8, Leah has four sons. The slave girl of Rachel has two sons, who, in the first of which, well really both of them, are legally Rachel's children. But in chapter 30, it gets much stranger. And after the sixth child is born to Jacob between Leah and the handmaiden of Rachel, um, something amazing happens. There's a time of wheat harvest. This is Genesis chapter 30, verse 14. And the oldest son of Leah is out walking in the wheat harvest. And he retrieves some plants for his mother. These plants are called in English mandrakes. It's a very unusual thing to think about in English. And it's, it's, it's a leafy weed. It's got a root like the root of a carrot. And in those days, the people who, who lived in those days believed that this plant would help a woman have a baby. And for that reason, these plants were, they were sought out. They were considered good luck, like a charm. And Reuben brings these plants to his mother, to Leah. And uh, Rachel finds out about it. And in verse 14, Leah, uh, Rachel says to Leah, share those plants with me. Leah believes that that's an outrageous request. And she says, well, I already have to share my husband with you. And now you want me to share these mandrakes with you as well. Now, evidently, by this time in the marriage, Jacob is spending every night with Rachel. And he's not paying any attention to Leah. So Leah says, and I know this is terrible, it's almost like a form of prostitution except for the fact that the people are married. Rachel says to Leah, uh, if you will give me those mandrakes, I will let Jacob come and spend the night with you. And uh, Jacob says, it's a deal. Now let's stop right here for just a moment. We're being told about an example of superstition the people believe that these plants will help Rachel get pregnant, will help any woman get pregnant. We're also, um, we're also told about something that, that seems very unethical. Here's 
a polygamous situation. A man has two wives. He likes one, he doesn't like the other. He's spending all his nights with the one that he likes. But the one that he likes makes a deal. And the deal is if she can have something she wants, then she'll give her husband back to her older sister for, for a little while. It's, it's, fairly, just, it's not a good thing to read about. Why is the Bible telling us about these things? Well, the main reason the Bible is telling us about these things is because these things really happened. The Bible does not hide the bad things about its heroes. We talked about that when we saw Abram give away Sarah in Genesis 12. And Abraham, his new name, give away Sarah again in Genesis chapter 20. And we talked about how the Bible shows the worst parts of its greatest heroes. And we talked about the fact that that's one proof that it's true. If it weren't true, if they were just making things up, then only the heroic part, only the uh, good parts would be publicized. But everything is publicized. The bad parts, the stupid parts, the superstitious parts are publicized. Now here's the question. Do Leah and Rachel believe that those plants will help a woman get pregnant? Yes, they do. Is the Bible teaching that those plants will get help a woman get pregnant? No, it's not. The Bible is showing us what those women, and perhaps Jacob himself, believed. It's going to be clear all through the book of Genesis that these women have babies because of the will of God, because of the sovereignty of God, according to the timing and the pleasure of God. But twice in Genesis 30, we see something really superstitious, something really bizarre. First with Rachel and then with the cattle, another superstition. And we'll, we'll talk about it in just a moment and we'll talk about more about what the Bible is really saying. But now let's talk about this. Why does Leah keep having babies because as a result of this, she actually has two more sons. So Leah has six sons before Rachel ever has one son. And by the way, when we study the whole book of Genesis, Moses, who's writing Genesis, is kind of cramming some of the chronological features of the narrative together. And what I mean by that is probably, when we study the whole book of Genesis, probably Joseph wasn't born until they left and they got to Canaan. But since, Jake, since Moses is writing about these women having babies, he just takes care of the subject in one place and then he moves on to tell us about how Jacob left his, his uncle's house and fled Haran and went to Canaan. But right now we're talking about these babies and we ask the question, why? Rachel is the favored woman. Rachel is the woman that Jacob loves. Why isn't she having babies? And why is it taking too long? Well, let's think about that question. First of all, think of the first matriarch. A patriarch is the first father. Matriarch is the first mother. If the first patriarch is Abraham, then the first matriarch is Sarah. Think about her. She didn't have a baby till she was 90 years old. And then Rebecca, her daughter-in-law, Isaac's wife, he had a pro she had a problem getting pregnant. And now Leah has no problem getting pregnant, but Rachel does have a problem getting pregnant. Well, let me just say that God's plan is not adjusted to the one Jacob loves. God's plan is not adjusted to Jacob's will. One thing that Jacob is going to learn, and it's going to take him a long, long time. It's going to take him a real long time. One of the things that Jacob is going to learn is that this plan is God's plan, not Jacob's plan. And this plan is according to God's sovereignty, God's will, not Jacob's will. And we do feel sorry for Rachel because 
we like romance. Almost everything in our culture manipulates our emotions and our desires to favor romance. We're shown a movie. A man is married. Maybe the woman is not very nice. He meets another woman who is very nice and very pretty. Very soon, we don't want him to be with that first old wife. We want him to be with this new woman because that's romantic. So many films are like that. So many books are like that. And we're, we're having our emotions manipulated to get us into Satan's own territory so that we're actually desiring adultery and wanting adultery to take place. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. The most famous book ever to come out of Atlanta, Georgia is a book called Gone with the Wind. There was a famous movie made in 1939 called Gone with the Wind. The book was written in 1936. It's about adultery. And you want adultery to happen. It's about a woman named Scarlett O'Hara who's married to one man, but you don't want her to be married to that man. You want her to be married to another man because you're manipulated romantically. Also, we wonder, why, does God, why is God blessing Leah? Let me tell you something else about our culture. If a woman is beautiful, she's already in first place. I mean, it's so easy to forgive a beautiful woman. It's so much easier to forgive a beautiful woman. Just like it's so much easier to forgive a rich man. If a man is wealthy, we, we get the feeling that, well, he probably deserves to be wealthy. And if a man is poor, we get the feeling maybe he probably deserves to be poor. And if a woman is beautiful, we get the feeling, well, she deserves to be beautiful. Well, she didn't have anything to do with it. It was God. It was God giving her a gift. God gave her a gift of beauty. God gave her a gift of Jacob's love. But God did not give her the first child or the second, or the third, or the fourth, or the fifth, or the sixth. She had to wait. Now she didn't wait. She gave Jacob her servant girl, thinking, well, I'm going to get a child one way or another, and thinking that she'd really done the right thing and God had really rewarded her. Well, he hadn't. He waited many children down the line, but then finally, he gave her this magnificent man who will be the hero of the last part of Genesis, the man called Joseph. We learn that in verses 22 through 24 where God remembers Rachel. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.